The year is 1587. Mary spent her last hours of her life in prayer. The executioner and his assistant knelt before her and asked for forgiveness. She was blindfolded with a white veil embroidered in gold, knelt down on the cushion in front of the block on which she positioned her head and stretched out her arms. Mary was accused of being involved in a plot to assassinate her cousin, Queen Elizabeth of England, who saw her as a threat to her throne and her Protestant religion. How did the Queen of Scotland and former Queen of France end up with a death sentence? Mary was born in 1542 at Linlithgow Palace, Scotland, to King James V and his French second wife, Mary of Guise. She was said to have been born prematurely and was the only legitimate child of James to survive him. Six days after her birth, she became Queen of Scotland when her father died. As Mary was a six-day-old infant when she inherited the throne, Scotland was ruled by regents until she became an adult. From the outset, there were two claims to the regency, one from a Catholic Cardinal Beaton and the other from the Protestant Earl of Arran, who was next in line to the throne. Beaton's claim was based on a version of the King's will that his opponents dismissed as a forgery. Arran, with the support of his friends and relations, became the regent until 1554, when Mary's mother managed to remove and succeed him. By order of the regent, Cardinal Beaton was imprisoned King Henry VIII of England took the opportunity of the Regency to propose marriage between Mary and his own son and heir, Edward, hoping for a union of Scotland and England. When Mary was six months old, the Treaty of Greenwich was signed, which promised that, at the age of ten, Mary would marry Edward and move to England. The treaty provided that the two countries would remain legally separate and if the couple should fail to have children, the temporary union would dissolve. Resistance to the treaty resulted in a surge in the popularity of the French faction and release of Beaton from prison. Cardinal Beaton rose to power again and began to push a pro-Catholic, pro-French agenda, angering Henry, who wanted to break the Scottish alliance with France. The Earl of Lennox escorted Mary and her mother to Stirling with 3,500 armed men. Mary was crowned in the Castle Chapel in 1543. Shortly before Mary's coronation, Henry arrested Scottish merchants headed for France and impounded their goods. The arrest caused anger in Scotland and Arran joined Beaton and became a Catholic. The Treaty of Greenwich was rejected by the Parliament of Scotland in December. The rejection of the marriage treaty and the renewal of the alliance between France and Scotland prompted Henry's rough wooing, a military campaign designed to impose the marriage of Mary to his son. English forces mounted a series of raids on Scottish and French territory. In 1546, Beaton was murdered by Protestant lairds. Nine months after the death of Henry VIII, the Scots suffered a heavy defeat at the Battle of Pinkie. Mary's guardians, fearful for her safety, turned to the French for help. King Henry II of France proposed to unite France and Scotland by marrying the young queen to his three-year-old son, the Dauphin Francis. On the promise of French military help and a French dukedom for himself, Arran agreed to the marriage. The much-awaited French help arrived at Leith to besiege and ultimately take Haddington. In 1548, a Scottish parliament near the town agreed to the French marriage treaty. With her marriage agreement in place, five-year-old Mary was sent to France to spend the next 13 years at the French court. In 1558, Mary signed a secret agreement bequeathing Scotland and her claim to England to the French crown if she died without issue. 20 days later, she married the Dauphin at Notre Dame de Paris and he became King Consort of Scotland. In November, Henry VIII's elder daughter Mary I of England was succeeded by her only surviving sibling, Elizabeth I. Under the Third Succession Act, passed in 1543 by the Parliament of England, Elizabeth was recognised as her sister's heir. Henry VIII's last will and testament had excluded the Stuarts from succeeding to the English throne. Yet, in the eyes of many Catholics, Elizabeth was illegitimate 
and Mary Stuart the rightful Queen of England, as the senior surviving legitimate descendant of Henry VII through her grandmother Margaret Tudor. Henry II of France proclaimed his eldest son and daughter-in-law King and Queen of England. When Henry II died in 1559 from injuries sustained in a joust, 15-year-old Francis and 16-year-old Mary became King and Queen of France. In Scotland, the power of the Protestant lords of the congregation was rising at the expense of Mary's mother, who maintained effective control only through the use of French troops. In early 1560, the Protestant lords invited English troops into Scotland in an attempt to secure Protestantism. A Huguenot uprising in France made it impossible for the French to send further support. In June, Mary's mother died. France and England undertook to withdraw troops from Scotland. Five months later, King Francis II died of a middle ear infection. Mary was grief-stricken. Mary returned to Scotland nine months later, having lived in France since the age of five. Mary had little direct experience of the dangerous and complex political situation in Scotland. As a devout Catholic, she was regarded with suspicion by many of her subjects, as well as by the Queen of England. Scotland was torn by Catholic and Protestant factions. Mary's illegitimate half-brother, the Earl of Murray, was a leader of the Protestants. The Protestant reformer John Knox preached against Mary. Mary sent an ambassador to the English court and put the case for Mary as the heir presumptive to the English throne. Elizabeth refused to name a potential heir fearing that would invite conspiracy to displace her with the nominated successor. Mary then turned her attention to finding a new husband. Her chance of being named as heir to the English throne would improve if she married an Englishman. Lord Darnley was Mary's cousin, where they had a shared grandparent and a link to the English crown through Margaret Tudor. They married at Holroyd Palace in 1565. Mary's marriage to a leading Catholic precipitated Mary's half-brother, the Earl of Moray, to join with other Protestant lords in open rebellion. Mary set out from Edinburgh to confront them. Mary with her forces and Moray with the rebellious lords roamed around Scotland without ever engaging in direct combat. Moray left Scotland in October for asylum in England. Before long, Darnley grew arrogant. He demanded the crown matrimonial. Mary refused this request and their marriage grew strained although she was pregnant. He was jealous of her friendship with her Catholic private secretary, David Rizzio, who was rumoured to be the father of her child. In 1566, a group of conspirators, accompanied by Darnley, murdered Rizzio in front of the pregnant Mary at a dinner party in Holyrood Palace. Mary's son by Darnley was born in June 1566 in Edinburgh Castle. However, the murder of Rizzio led to the breakdown of her marriage. Darnley, feared for his safety, went to Glasgow to stay at his father's estates. In late January 1567, Mary prompted her husband to return to Edinburgh. He was recuperating from an illness in a house at the former Abbey of Kirkerfield. Mary visited him daily so it appeared a reconciliation was in progress. On the night of the 9th and 10th of February 1567, Mary visited her husband in the evening. In the early hours of the morning, an explosion devastated Kirkerfield. Darnley was found dead in the garden, apparently smothered. There was no visible marks of strangulation or violence on the body. By the end of February, Lord Bothwell was generally believed to be guilty of Darnley's assassination. He was acquitted after a seven-hour trial on the 12th of April. On the 21st of April, 1567, Mary visited her son at Stirling for the last time. On her way back to Edinburgh on the 24th of April, she was abducted by Lord Bothwell and his men and taken to Dunbar Castle. On the 6th of May, Mary and Bothwell returned to Edinburgh and on the 15th, they were married according to Protestant rites. Both Protestants and Catholics were shocked that Mary should marry the man accused of murdering her husband. Mary and Bothwell confronted the Lords at Carberry Hill. The Lords took Mary to Edinburgh, where crowds of spectators denounced her as an adulteress and murderer. The following night, she was imprisoned at Loch Leven Castle, 
23rd of July, Mary miscarried twins. She was forced to abdicate in favour of her one-year-old son, James. Morrie was made regent, while Bothwell was driven into exile. In 1568, Mary escaped from Loch Leven Castle with the aid of the castle's owner's brother. She crossed the Solway Firth into England by fishing boat. On the 18th, local officials took her into protective custody at Carlisle Castle. Mary apparently expected Elizabeth to help her regain her throne. Elizabeth was cautious, ordering an inquiry into the conduct of the Confederate Lords and the question of whether Mary was guilty of Darnley's murder. As evidence against Mary, Morrie presented the so-called casket letters. All were said to have been found in a silver gilt casket. Mary denied writing them and insisted they were forgeries. Elizabeth, as she had wished, concluded the inquiry with the verdict that nothing was proven against either the Confederate Lord or Mary. Moray returned to Scotland as regent and Mary remained in custody in England. Elizabeth had succeeded in maintaining a Protestant government in Scotland without either condemning or releasing her fellow sovereign. During her imprisonment in England, Mary was kept in various castles and manor houses under the custody of different jailers. She was sometimes allowed to go out under escort, but other times confined to her room. She suffered from poor health and harsh living conditions in some of the prisons. There were several plots against Elizabeth involving Mary while in custody. The Ridolfi plot in 1571 planned to dispose Elizabeth and replace her with Mary as Queen. The Duke of Norfolk was implicated and there were rumours of help from Spanish troops. Norfolk was executed. In 1571, Murray was assassinated. In 1584, Mary proposed an association with her son James. She announced that she was ready to stay in England, abandoning her pretensions to the English crown, and to retire. She also offered to join an offensive league against France, agreed that James should marry with Elizabeth's knowledge, and accept that there should be no change in religion. Her only condition was the immediate alleviation of her captivity. James eventually rejected the idea and signed an alliance treaty with Elizabeth, abandoning his mother. Elizabeth also rejected the association because she did not trust Mary to cease plotting against her. The Babington plot in 1586 was the most serious and the most fatal for Mary. Anthony Babington, an English Catholic nobleman, plotted to restore the Roman Catholic religion by placing Mary on the English throne. He wrote letters to Mary who replied with her approval and suggestions. However, these letters were intercepted by Elizabeth's master of spies, who used them as evidence to convict Mary of treason. Mary was moved to Fotheringhay Castle. She was convicted on the 25th of October and sentenced to death. At Fotheringhay on the 8th of February 1587, Mary was executed. Her last words were, Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit.